everyone, welcome back to another episode of Daily J. <laughs> I haven't done one of these in ages. Um, I have so much that I want to share today and I have been looking forward to filming this but also feeling like I wanted to wait until I had enough energy to be able to do it well, do it properly and do it while also caring for myself. Um, I've been grappling with a little bit of burnout since I got back from my trip and it's been so intense and really interesting to <laughs> navigate this experience of feeling like I'm walking around with a broken or an injured something. The analogy that I've been using so much lately is like I'm walking around on crutches, like I've got a big broken ankle or swollen foot or like, you know, a big bruisey thing going on, except the injury, you can't, like it's not a physical injury, like you can't see it, it's, it's purely psychic, it's purely something that's going on like internally. Um, and it's been really like, it's, it's in a society that still doesn't fully understand and recognize the, the deep ramifications and the deeply entrenched, um, or just the importance of the psyche and and how it works and because you know we don't we don't have a really good understanding of the things that we can't see yet collectively and so it's been really interesting to kind of navigate this experience of like how do I communicate to people how do I how do I advocate for myself like speak up for myself and what I need when there's no kind of physical sign or symptom that I'm struggling that I'm like operating at like this much capacity compared to like my normal this much so it's just been this really wild journey of figuring out like trying to figure out like how this happened trying to figure out um what i can you know how i support myself through this and also just like you know how do i like how do i keep living <laughs> like how do i do the basic things i said to a friend the other day like it feels like my expectations are like this and my capacity is like this and everything feels like it's taking twice as long and I've got half as much energy to do it. And so it's just, it's, I've had to have so much grace with myself because you guys know I've, you know, I've got like these massive, the dreams and ambitions that I have for my life haven't gone away. Like they're still there. They're still like kind of hammering away at the back of my mind and there's this internal pressure that kind of like, is moving me, you know, wants to move me forward into new experiences and new things and new creative projects and whatever. But it's just like, yeah, like trying to run a marathon with a broken foot. Like you just, like you just, at some point, you know, and I've been like, you know, broken down in the middle of wherever, like bawling my eyes out, like sitting on the kitchen floor, just like can't get up, like that kind of thing. It's It's been... Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it's been hard. It's been really, really hard. And it's only in the last probably 48 hours or maybe 72 hours that I've kind of like come to grips with like, okay, this is what's going on and I need to care for myself. Something that my counselor and I spoke about in um, a session we had the other day was this idea that like, if you did have a broken foot, it wouldn't actually matter how it happened, you would still take care of yourself, right? Like it's a no brainer. You, you don't really have a choice. Like you've got to take care of yourself. And we're talking about how like the way that things happen kind of influences our response to them. And I was like, but I would be way more likely to care well for myself. And this speaks to my conditioning or like my, I guess my, the conditionality of the love that I've been giving myself or the judgments that I've had. It's like, I'd be way more likely to take good care of myself if I knew that I like tripped and fell down the stairs on the way to visit my grandma in hospital, like doing something really lovely versus like got really drunk, danced on a table, you know, couldn't remember the night, blacked out, had like a, had a really chaotic experience. And she was talking about it and she's like, okay, so there's this sense of, we, we kind of understood that there was a judgment for my own recklessness. And it's so interesting for me, like you guys know, I got, well, you might not know, <laughs> I got back from overseas um, this time, maybe a month ago. I was there for five weeks in the US and I just, I had this experience. It was unbelievable. Like I had this unbelievable experience and it was so fun and exciting and liberating and carefree and joyful and amazing and awe-inspiring and divine. And it was also crazy and hard and heartbreaking and fuck like so oh like it was it was yeah it was challenging it was really challenging way less so and this is you know a marker of my progress which i really like looking back on 
way less challenging than the last time I went to the US and just like had this whole like experience. This one had more good stuff than like hard stuff, um, but there was still a lot of hard stuff. You know, solo traveling is intense, like it's full on and I'm still working out how to do it gracefully. I had a message with a friend the other night and she was like, you're getting a master class in your own energy mastery, like learning how to manage your own energy. And that's what it feels like. And that's what it feels like, you know, I said the whole time with this trip, it's, it's my second attempt. So like no pressure. It's just, it's my second attempt. So like I don't have to get anything, you know, perfect. It doesn't have to be amazing. I mean, I said this consciously, there was some stuff operating in the background that like I wasn't aware of until after I've come back. And now I'm like looking back at it. Um, but yeah, so much has come from like looking back at this experience now and realizing how much I was driven from this like deeply unconscious, kind of conscious, but deeply unconscious place um, to kind of push myself beyond any reasonable limits and how my meter for reading like my own sense of, you know, this is enough, like I need to stop now, <laughs> has kind of like gone, like I don't know where it went, it is gone. <laughs> So it's like, okay, so how do I, I was reading Women Who Run With Wolves recently and Clarissa Pinkola S says, who's all that, she talks about how in each of us, there's like a wise old woman that's like, puts her foot down and is like enough is enough. Like she knows when to stop. She knows when to say when, but sometimes when things get out of whack in our psyche and internally, and I feel like for me, just being completely transparent, I was so starved of adventure and variety, new people, new experiences, because I'd just been doing the same thing every day for so long. And I've been trying as much as I can in this environment to kind of like keep it, you know, spice it up a little bit and keep that adventure, like stoke that fire of adventure because it's such a big part of who I am and keep that alive in me. But it just, there came a point where I was like, I can't do this here anymore. Like this environment is not... I just, I felt so unbelievably starved of adventure. I hadn't figured out how to create that kind of like spark that vitality and that lust for life that I have um, in like this, you know, physical environment that I was living and working in every day for, I mean, the last like, for a very, very, very long time, a long time before I went overseas. And so she talks about in the book, she's like, you got to actually exercise these muscles to know, um, and these instincts to know when enough is enough and to know like, that, you know, when they kick in, you can actually listen to that wisdom in yourself and be like, oh, <laughs> I need to stop now. And this is why so many, you know, creatives and, and young people and, and even, you know, people, older people don't know when to stop when it comes to like drinking, like sex, drugs, rock and roll, like all of that sort of stuff. They just get so, and she talks about it in reference to creative people, but I think it's, you know, it's, I mean, we're all creative. We can't not be. We are inherently creative beings. Um, but there's this, yeah, we, <laughs> when we have this incredible capacity to create and this like innate desire and lust for life within us that is like bursting forth, if we don't nurture that and stoke that and feed that well, then it can get out of control. And I, I did a video on this one of my, like the videos that I like, I, my videos on TikTok haven't blown up yet. One of them has. And I'm just like, I don't know how it happened. I'm trying to like like reverse engineer the process and work backwards to be like, how on earth? Um, but the one video that has blown up that I have on TikTok is about um, the, uh, what's it called? Um, it's in the Harry Potter spin-off series. Um, I think it's called a, not a succubus. Um, what's the... Oh, not an oculus <laughs> that's like the mask thing with the goggles um if you know it it's like a big black ball anyway it's like destruct destructive creative energy and if you don't use that creative energy or that energy becomes like suppressed and kind of pushed down within you then it turns into yeah it turns into destructive energy but the essence of it is actually magic right it's like it's children who actually have that magical powers but are afraid to use them because of the culture that they've grown up in um obscurus thank you that was gonna bug the shit out of me um obscurus and if you yeah if you have if you are an obs obscural um, that's like a divine magical being, but then when it gets smushed, it becomes an obscurus, which is like destructive creative energy. And so I, uh, I feel like I, I was doing that a little bit in my own life and there was like elements of obscural or no, obscurusness, um, that when I went overseas just like exploded and I didn't, I had 
this is combined with something else that I want to talk about in this video as well but I didn't have like I knew that I was going to be and I'd done preparation for this in the lead up to the trip I knew that I was going to have way more freedom than I was used to having way more scope way more like a bigger space to run around in so I was kind of preparing myself for that I knew that I'd have more decisions to make I knew that I'd have you know a bigger scope of like higher stakes in the sense that like I mean I've heard it said that I've heard it said <laughs> um, that people come into our lives for a reason I've heard it. There's a new Wicked movie coming out. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be so good. Ariana Grande plays Glinda the Good Witch. What the? F and Jonathan, what's his face from Bridgerton, is playing the guy who does like dancing through life. Oh man, musical theater. I'm on such a musical theater kick at the moment. I have been since like the beginning of time. I think the first time I ever saw The Lion King, I think I was like seven in Sydney at the something theater, the Royal, the Regents, Regent Theater. I don't think that. Oh, that'll come to me too. But oh my God, I just like absolutely, that show changed me forever. And ever since then I've wanted to, yeah, just obsess, like really, really, really love the genre. Um, want to create my own sneaky little side thing there. Um, have been, yeah, like, yeah, really would love to create my own have songs like have written on like a couple of lines for potential songs <laughs> for a musical um, that I would love to yeah put on Broadway it's one of my dreams okay coming back to the reality of right now and what we're talking about so I knew that I would have this like massive boost of creative energy and I wanted that like that's what I was going over there for I wanted and this kind of leads in beautifully to the second point that I wanted to talk about today or like the crux really of this whole video is that I had felt like I wasn't actually actualizing my potential to the fullness of its, of its ability just because I didn't have the kind of like land or landscape in which to do that. So if you think about like a bird flying, <laughs> um, I felt like I was in a bit of a cage or my wings were cramped or like even actually, this is just as I'm saying this, this is coming to me now. When I was at a, like a women's camp thing, thing that I did uh, at the end of last year in November, I was dancing in this space, right, and a woman came up to me after, and I just did this like improvised interpreting dance. I've never done that before in my life, like in front of an audience, but I was like, tonight's the night. Uh, I was so terrified, and the vulnerability hangover was like excruciating the next day. I almost like couldn't even look people in the eye when they would come talk to me about it. I was like, oh, I was just, it was so funny. Like, yeah, dancing is just, for whatever reason, just like so excruciatingly vulnerable for me. Um, in that, like in that, yeah, interpretive and, you know, without any kind of choreography it was just poof, like improv like that it was huge um but a woman came up to me afterwards and she's like i felt like you could have used like you should have just asked us to move back because you could have used that whole room you know like i we had like half the room the audience was sitting there and we had like half the room as the stage she's like you should have just asked us to get out of the way because you could have just like room the whole space and that's this is exactly what i felt like before i left i felt like i like I had this like this space and I, I I was kind of constantly like I realized it but I also didn't I just I knew that I needed to like have a bigger arena to kind of like wield the gifts that I'd been given and power powers and just like actualize some more fucking magic because it was like it's like yeah when you don't use it like it's just annoying and it kind of sits there pestering you and and this is like oh man this is the thing this has been so challenging for me to kind of not it's not as challenging as like thought it would be there's voices in my head right now being like slow down and the other voice is like shut up she's doing great <laughs> do you guys get that please tell me that you also have these voices in your head um but <laughs> a part of me thought that i was feeling the sense of like restlessness and this kind of sense of like a lack of like deep fulfillment and a part of me thought that like going over there and being in the fullness of my essence and like really just like going for it with my magic and like boom like let's do this like let's travel let's have all the experiences let's like let's see what this baby can do let's get myself out on the open road let's spread my wings let's motherfucking fly like i've been preparing i've been practicing i've got all these gifts i know what to do like let's actually see if i can what i can achieve with this and a part of me thought that that was going to scratch this deep existential itch that i had felt pretty much my entire life coming home because <laughs> I did right I went over I went ham like I literally 
I was I pushed myself and pushed myself and pushed myself in some ways it was fantastic because I really did like get a sense of like oh shit like I, I just did that like what and it's so interesting because and I'm having these kind of like interesting conversations and like realizations but also questions with myself recently since I've been home of like how much of that was me and how did I how did I do that some of it is like consciously I'm using conscious like manifestation practices like I'm okay I know that you know in order to create this kind of experience I'm in this like state of being I'm saying these affirmations I'm kind of like having I'm consciously using the tools that I've cultivated and developed to create an experience for myself that I know that I'll enjoy other things I'm like I kind of like I'm like did, was that an accident <laughs> like I believe in conscious creation. I believe that we're creating our experiences. And I also believe that like, I also understand that there are some things that are happening that I'm like, I don't have the awareness to know how that fits with that. Like, I don't know how I did that. <laughs> I don't know how that happens. Um, so it's just this really interesting thing of like how much of, I mean, I want to be able to say like, oh, I just, I knew exactly what I was doing and I did it all and I could do it again if you asked me. But I feel like some things I probably could, some things I definitely could not. Some things are just so far out of the like the realm of what I know is possible, like consciously and like in this part of my brain that I just, yeah, there's, there's no, like, I can't tell you, I can't reverse engineer that yet. I don't know how I did I just did. Um, and I don't know, you know, like, was it angels that were kind of, you know, pulling the, pulling behind the curtain, like pulling the strings? Was it like, you know, yeah, was it divine intervention? Was it, you know, and then how does that work? Like divine intervention, you know? How much of it is like, you know, angels and other beings interceding on our behalf? Like how much of it is, you know, is it all literally just coming from us and, you know, aspects of our awareness that we can, maybe aspects of our awareness that we aren't or aspects of ourselves and our consciousness that we aren't aware of are creating these things all of the time. Um, and so it might look like it's coming from outside of us or it's like intercession by another, you know, divine being but it's actually still coming from us. Regardless, I mean, if you believe in oneness, then there is, it's both, right? There's no separation there. It's kind of just like, it's me and it's an intercession by divine beings, but the divine beings are also me. Anyway, let's, that's a whole nother fucking video. The point is I went hard, like I went really hard and I, you know, I was, I, I was not getting enough sleep, like, you know, was just sacrificing like, you know, I guess a bit of my health, but like, you know, sleep and, and proper meals and that sort of stuff for the sake of like experimentation and curiosity and exploration and like I got up at four in the morning because you know I wanted to you know meditate and get myself in the right frame of mind to you know be able to kind of create these experiences for myself I I push myself into un like discomfort like I was constantly like okay this makes me feel uncomfortable let's go do that like pushing up against like these barriers of my own comfort and my own security and my own feelings of safety just to test it out just to kind of like be able to say that I did and also because I was operating under this like very very like intense paradigm kind of false kind of like I mean there's some truth to it but I think mostly false paradigm that like we have to like suffer for our creativity and we have to like the more like it, it, if it's not uncomfortable as hell you're not doing it right and it's really interesting and I'll probably do a whole other video and this when it becomes a lot clearer for me like what's actually going on with this but there is definitely a theme that I'm noticing and a pattern that I'm noticing and I'll just speak to this as best I can, but like a pattern that I've noticed in my life where I'm seeking out discomfort because I feel like I need it in order to like create more freedom for myself, but almost like I have gone too far to the point where I now feel trapped sometimes by this like compulsion to continue to seek out discomfort. Does that make sense? So it's like the trap within the trap. So the trap is like, you know, never letting anything happen to you, never seeking, just like never doing anything uncomfortable. But then the trap within the trap is like always doing things that are uncomfortable and then becoming bound by that and by the need and this compulsion, this feeling that like, okay, well, you know, I'm comfortable, I'm safe, I'm happy. But something in me is like, hang on a second, I'm do I was doing all of this. I was pushing up against these barriers to knock them down so that I could feel more free, so that I could have more room and space to roam, so that you know, just as an example, like if I, you know, going up and talking to a handsome stranger or someone that I found like really intimidating, I would do that and I would expose myself to that situation so that I would feel like 
so that I would experience more freedom in my day to day life. And so that next time a handsome stranger came across my path, I wouldn't be like, ah! like I would have this new expression of energy in that situation to be like, oh, okay, cool. I know how to deal with this. I know how to do this. My nervous system's a bit more regulated. I like, I'm not freaking out that I'm going to fucking die. But then it becomes this thing where you're like, and this is the trap within the trap. It's like, you become, I became like almost like, indebted to this or like a slave no i don't like that word kind of like i just had to keep going like i just had to yeah like i've got to seek out like all of the pressure points and all of the discomfort and to the point where i was like i don't feel free anymore i don't feel free i don't feel like expansive and nourished and excited which is the whole fucking point of this in the beginning you know like and peaceful because that's the thing like it's it's annoying to have your peace constantly interrupted by all these things you're afraid of but then it's like at what point do you just accept that like okay so i'm you know um, this is my kind of realm that i'm operating in let's just operate peacefully here for a little while without constantly trying to like you know more territory more you know bigger expansion bigger like ex in energetic space and feel to walk around it it's like anyway huge i thought though <laughs> i really thought that doing this would have this effect of, like I said before, <sighs> scratching this existential itch within me. And that's what sucks because I feel like coming home and feeling like I've just dived off the edge of a cliff in the sense of like I was up here and now I'm here. Oh, like it's probably a little more like this and this. Realizing that even allowing myself and even giving myself permission to go full power to go full wattage, to go like full fucking magnitude, to do the best of the best that I possibly could, to the best of my ability. And that's not to say I like got everything right. Like there was a lot of fuck ups, there was a lot of mistakes, and there was a lot of like, uh. But I, I tried really hard and I kind of gave myself over to that, compul no, to that pressure and that energy within me that just wants to just do the best and be the best all the time. I thought that that would allow me to experience a sense of like wholeness, fulfillment and satisfaction that I was longing for. It didn't. It fucking didn't. I got home and I was like, oh, <laughs> and it just sucks because it doesn't suck. It's great because it means that I've kind of had that experience and I know what I know now. And what I know is that I actually wasn't looking for that. <laughs> like I actually didn't, in some respects I did want that and I'm glad I had that experience, but deep down, I, I didn't want that. I wanted and what, what I've always wanted and what my whole experience has been kind of like leading me back to and towards is unconditional love for myself. That is like, completely like has nothing to do with like how well I show up, how f magical I am, how many people I serve, like how good, brilliant, life changing my experience is or my work is nothing to do with it, literally nothing. And I thought I was like, okay, I'll just give myself this permission to just be like, you know, fly, fly king of the mountain, you know, like, have these like soar, feet off the ground, like soul soaring, like incredible opportunities. And I did, and it was awesome. It wasn't the thing that actually went. And do you know how like, oh my God, it's so frustrating to, to kind of hear myself say that. Uh, it's, part of me is wondering now if I like, cause I just watched a video before I got on into this and I'm like, have I just absorbed this woman's energy and now I'm just like regurgitating in her vibe. But I feel like, no, I'm coming as much as I can from my own sense of self right now. So I'll just keep going like this. Um, but I, yeah, I really didn't want the things that I thought that I wanted and I didn't get the things that I actually wanted, um, because I didn't know what they were and I didn't actually need to leave home <laughs> in order to experience the things that I, the thing that I actually wanted. Not saying the trip was a mistake. The trip was a great decision. Um, so many times over there I had this experience, these experiences of like, Cool, like really believing in my own ability to make great decisions for myself because I saw the action consequence of like me making a decision and then me having a really cool experience and I was like it really built up my self-esteem in that respect of like oh I can actually like my faith in myself like I can actually make decisions good decisions that you know decisions that lead to great outcomes that support me like 
this is good this is a good thing to experience and to see myself doing because it instills that confidence right and that faith but fucking hell I had this analogy come through the other day about like I'm sitting at the top of a mountain like I've just climbed Mount Everest and I'm realizing that there's another mountain literally that I'm like actually just at the base of another mountain and I'm sitting there I'm like I'm not fucking moving like I am not climbing that mountain and there's this like reality that's sinking in of like oh shit like it sounds it was never about the mountain it was never about the climb it was never about the view it was never about the height it was never about the depth the complexity none of it it just doesn't matter compared to this compared to my own unconditional love, which I've been withholding from myself and which I need to like, no, which I'm now, which I've been in like, it's not like saying that sounds so like it's, you know, it's just undermining everything that I've done to kind of cultivate this incredible relationship with myself. It's not that at all. It's just that this is a whole new level of like the depth of this unconditional love that I require and that I want from myself and that I need and crave of myself and like with myself is just like, yeah, it's, I thought that like, I, it's, it's like, it's, I thought it was this, it's actually this. And so I was over here, like giving it my all over here. It was actually here all along. And I just, and so I've been sitting with that because there's no, like, I just, I said to another counselor the other day, I was like, there's no fucking way I'm getting off this. Like my, my point right now, like I'm not climbing another fucking mountain. Like there's this exhaustion that kicks in when you realize, and it's so interesting the way the psyche kind of like creates all of these, like you, you can feel it. And I'm very grateful that I have, you know, language and I'm kind of finding language to be able to articulate this and like, you know, the metaphors and stuff, because it's such a, like a nuanced experience, like expression experience to have this thing where you're like, I, there's pressure in me that being like, climb another mountain, do it, do it, do it. But then there's this other part of me that's like, fuck no. And to have the awareness to be able to be like, I'm going to, both of these, you know, these are both aspects of myself and I'm not going to deny one in favor of the other. I'm not going to like, you know, suppress, like, I'm not just going to charge forward. I honestly don't think I could, even if I wanted to be having a broken, broken foot and all, <laughs> but like, I'm not going to beat myself up for having, or even like, write it off as resistance which i th think i would have done in the past like oh i'm just being like a baby like i just need to suck it up climb the next fucking mountain maybe when i get to the top of that one that's but it was just like this i think because i've climbed so many mountains now that's what you know in my own life and this you know this looks so different for everyone i feel like my mountains pale in comparison to other people's mountains but like why are you comparing you know like i just if you want to look at it from that lens then yeah like my mountains are like this and other people's are like this and some people's are like this but it's not like I don't through the eyes of love there is no comparison and so when I talk about like you know I've climbed so many mountains that's not to big note myself or kind of be like I'm a fucking badass it's more just but I am a badass like let's be honest it's more just to say that like no amount of badassery will ever fulfill like the void that my own unconditional love is like <laughs> designed to fulfill right um there is no, and I just had this like revelation of like, oh shit, <laughs> like every, I think every time I've kind of got climbed a bit more of the mountain and climbed more of the mountain in my head, I've been like, oh, okay, this doesn't feel like I thought it would, but that's cool. I'll just, it must be because like, I haven't done enough yet. I haven't climbed a big enough mountain yet. And I think this trip was a big enough fucking mountain to wake me up to the fact that this is actually not the thing that I was really craving because, and I probably... Maybe, you know, it just took something this like grand and this like huge and this grandiose like adventure for me to realize that. And something so like taxing and just dr not draining, um, demanding, right? To kind of, and just big, to wake me up to the fact that like no amount of achievement, no amount of like literally anything, death defining feats of, you know, faith, feats of strength, feats of you know creativity like the the best piece of writing that i've ever written in my entire life does not fucking matter it's this and it's so it's interesting because it's like one part of me is like oh but like i know how to climb mountains and i was ready to kind of keep doing this but then another part of me is like thank god like it just the perspective shift is just ridiculous in terms of like how I view the world how I'm starting to view the world and how I'm viewing my life rather than kind of like yeah planning for like okay well what's a bigger mountain 
you know, like if I just climb a big enough mountain, then I'll feel it. It's like just this complete 180, like reframe of like, actually, this is, it has nothing to do with the mountain. Absolutely nothing. It could be Everest. It could be a mountain to the moon. It could be a death defying, one handed, one armed, climbing up like amputated leg, like <laughs> um, while reading three sonnets. And like, you know, filming a New York Times best-selling documentary, world award-winning Grammy songwriter, singer song. Like, do you get what I'm saying? And then, you know, getting to the top and like leaping off and, you know, skydiving down and or flying in a plane all around like ping pong. But <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's like even like filming this video, right? This could be the best, you know, it could be the best, most articulate, most authentic, most incredible, most profound, most wise, most otherworldly wisdom. Wouldn't matter. To the part of me who really knows what's up and gives a fuck doesn't matter wouldn't matter like she's not impressed by that she's not fulfilled by that she doesn't crave that and i think it's just like such a fucking like it's so liberating and i'm sure you'll, you'll feel like my energy in this video is a lot more like free and kind of i can talk a little bit more freely and easily in this video than i have in a while because it's just like there's no pressure like there's no i don't have this like insatiable kind of I still have I feel like this internal pressure like no I want this to be great and I want it to be like this is the other thing that I thought it was conditional upon I want it to be like the I want everyone to I want it to do justice to what I feel within me and so much of this is like and you guys I know you feel this too like I'm speaking to you so I know I'm sure you feel this too there's and I read something in a book the other day and it was like um, if you make something that there is at least one other person who it's made for and I love that like I feel like I feel like I lost sight of that so I shouldn't believe that for a little while I was like oh, I'll just keep making things even if no one sees them they're for me but now I, I kind of feel the sense of like no there is like at least one other person out there in the whole world that this is made for and I feel like I'm connecting with you through this so that's really cool and that's really beautiful and even if you know people are making things that are specifically like just for me right now and there's this feeling of like coming together in that like a togetherness of like I'm here, you're here, but we're connected by this. We're joining in this, we're meeting in this middle point. And I love that. I think that's beautiful. So this video is for you. Please let me know because I know there's at least one of you in the world that like needs to see this video. Or well, who this is made for, apart from just me. As well as me. Um, but yeah, there's a sense of like, I still have this internal drive to like do... Oh yeah, that's what I was going to say. This sense of... Um, like I have to do justice to what is within me. Like, you know, you experience your own, you know, your, mag your own magic and your own beauty and your own like, oh my God, I'm the miracle of me. And I want to like make sure that I'm getting that across and communicating that in a way that does justice to everything that I feel, think and know inside of me. And I felt a lot of pressure to do that perfectly. And I thought maybe that was it. I thought like maybe if I can get what's inside out, it'll like scratch that itch, quell that longing, fill that void, you know, make me feel the thing that I was longing to feel. And a lot of this is like so not even conscious thoughts that I was having of like I need to fill a void or whatever. It was just this like always just like longing and searching and like doing more things but not really knowing why but also having no idea that it, this was why. Um, and it really took I think me kind of burning out and just being like what like having moments of like what the, like what the actual fuck <sighs> like how how is it good for me. I'm saying I'm doing this for myself and yet I have a broken foot, you know, like I'm exhausted. I can't move. I have drained my bank account. Like I am in this current predicament where I'm living with my mum, and it's just like, you know, how I'm saying that this is, I'm doing this under the guise of like it being good. Is it actually good for me? Am I really doing it because I want what's best for me? You know? And then if not, then why am I doing it? And there's just realization that like all along I've been looking for and searching for this, this kind of experience that I can only gift and give to myself. Um, but yeah, so yeah, there's a lot less pressure now because regardless of how this video turns out, whether it's the best thing or the worst thing, whether I get ex exactly right, exactly, you know, whether I say exactly what I want to say. And I have, I'm having this experience more and more now of like expressing and experiencing exactly, you know, getting it, what's inside of me out. But again, it's not the thing it's a great thing but it's not the thing so yeah All right voice in my head is telling me to wrap it up now <laughs> what about what's this voice saying 
I'm learning to listen to this like like is enough like enough is enough because it's just yeah it's just the burnout thing and like the getting to the point where my capacity is like this it's just not worth it anymore like it's so I mean I just realize I value like my energy and feeling good so much more than this like you know getting anything done like getting it all done because like I mean it's gonna catch up with me eventually so what's the point of like pretending that I can outwit my own energy you know what I mean like what's the point of pretending that I can like you know I can like be more cunning than my own energetic like capacity um like it's just yeah I feel like it's gonna come back and it has it's come back and bit me in the ass in the sense that I'm like have days had days like in the last couple weeks where I couldn't get off the couch like was visiting mental health facilities like don't freak out when I say that I feel like someone's going to take that and try and twist it and use it it's just a perfectly awesome place that I go to um to do this to talk it out to feel good again and I mean if you're gonna twist it you're gonna twist it I can't can't stop you but ah oh, just fuck this yeah so much of this trip like reminded me of the goodness of humans and the greatness of people and just being able to see through and I'm really holding myself to this now like seeing through my own judgments and projections around people which are just like no human soul human soul like doing the best they can doing the best they can like let's have some grace let's have some motherfucking grace with each other um some people will get that some people won't cool <sighs> But yeah, whether this is the best video, whether it's the worst thing ever, and I, you know, regret making it, I don't think I, I don't, I feel like it's really cool. Um, but it doesn't actually matter because what I actually really want, which I've decided to give myself, is like my own unconditional love. And that just, that's actually the thing that I really want. So as long as I have that, then I'm going to have everything that I want. So everything else is just like a bonus. Cool. This was fun. I really enjoyed doing this. Um, yeah, like I said, haven't had a lot of energy for this stuff, so this feels really good to be able to do this. Hopefully my energy will... I mean, I'm just rolling with it now. Again, it's the same thing. I have this, so it doesn't actually matter. I mean, my, my capacity could be this. My capacity could be this. It doesn't matter. The love for myself, I, I feel, and I give, choose to give myself. Um, it's still the same. All right, I'm getting the feeling enough is enough. All right, thanks for tuning in. I love that you guys are here. I love that you're watching this and you're listening to me and we're having this moment of like connecting and meeting in time and space. It's beautiful. Please leave a comment. Please send me a message. Just let me know that you got this and you received this and um, let's have a chat about it. I feel like, yeah, conversation about it in the comments, in my DMs, just in the comments actually. That would be great. Cool. All right, love you, bye.